Hello everyone, it's Lion here with Hobbies of a Man. And a quick note before we start the video, um, please like and subscribe and comment down below. I'm trying to get over 50 subscribers by the end of the month. So if you guys could help me out, that'd be awesome. I'm doing a week of daily uploads for uh, this last week of May of 2020. Um, and that's just so I can try to get more people interested and more people into the uh, channel because I'm trying to grow, you know? And thank you guys very much uh, for listening and enjoy the video. Hello YouTube, it's Lion here with Hobbies of a Man once again, and today we're going to do another manga review. Today's manga is going to be Inspector, Volume 1. Um, this one is also known as in Invented Interference. Um, the author is Kyo uh, Shirodaira, um, and the illustrator is Chasiba Katase. This is technically an adaptation of a novel that Kadansha previous previously published under a different imprint. Like, it's not Kadansha Comics, like this one is, as you can see. Um, and it's a really interesting story. This uh, The genres for this are shonen and supernatural and mystery. Um, it has an adaptation. It just uh, started airing, I think, this year. And like I said, it's a novel adaptation. And yeah, let's just jump into it. So the premise here is uh, basically you meet this weird girl and then you meet this guy that's really simple. Uh, they tend to uh, use a goat as a comparison for him or like a metaphor saying that it's a simple creature that hides some uh, vitality and power within it. Uh, referring to the fact that goats can uh, survive in rather interesting uh, climates and environments. Um, and so you kind of see them interacting and you find out that there's more to them that meets the eye. And it kind of has to do with uh, specters or the Japanese term that they use is yokai. Yokai are kind of um, mythological creatures that uh, the Japanese are very uh, well known for, kind of. Um, and yeah, that's basically what it is. It's kind of like a mystery thriller to an extent. Um, although the mystery is more why they're the way they are than it is um, what they're trying to figure out. And it's not really a battle shonen, but there are some fights in it that are uh, actually kind of solved in a rather interesting way sometimes. And yeah, it's a really good story. So the plot line here, and I'm gonna put that down because it's heavy. Or, well, because it's annoying to hold more uh, accurately. Um, it's interesting. It's good. Uh, it's not really all that fleshed out. This only covers what seems to be two chapters of the story, which are basically the introduction. Um, but it does have enough stuff there. It has a bit of a flashback sequence that shows the male character's um, kind of past. And you get some uh, flashback for the female character character as well which is kind of interesting um you get to know a little bit about them you get to figure out um kind of where they come from and why they're uh, relevant to the yokai and that's kind of what the plot is at the beginning here it's very much like this slow unwinding of a uh slight mystery that these characters have with each other it's very character driven in this uh first volume Although it seems like it's going to be a lot more event driven in the next volume from uh, the ending. Um, and it, it's interesting how the plot line kind of starts and you kind of feel like it's going to be some sort of romance uh, story. But then as it starts developing, you realize that that's not really what it is. And it's really interesting how that kind of happens. Um, and yeah, the characters here are really good. I think they're really interesting. Um, the girl is named Kotoko. Um, she's kind of a weirdo. She is, has this... Uh, she comes off as like a rich, spoiled girl. But one that's very educated very, and very down to earth. And she's really endearing in like this odd like... Um, I know more than you, but I'm cute so it's okay kind of way. I don't really know how to explain it. But it's very interesting and it's really... Um, enjoyable to kind of see her interacting with other characters. Um, she also has a missing leg and a missing missing eye. 
And uh, according to some lore, that kind of means she's a god. I don't really understand uh, where that comes from. I think it's some sort of Japanese lore. They kind of explain it at the end, but I can't remember off the top of my head at the moment. Um, and yeah, she's, she's really interesting in this very, like, she's not a very basic shonen female protagonist. You know, most of the time female protagonists are played for um, fan service. They tend to be battle oriented, but not really all that useful um, because you want the main character to do everything. And they kind of uh, go away and come back whenever there's some need for them to interact with their with their male counterpart. But he or she's really more of the main character. And the male kind of fills in that role that usually female characters fill in shonen. Um, which uh, is a good segue into the male character. His name is Kuro. And like I said, he has this sort of like interesting loser kind of persona. Like you don't really understand him very much at the beginning you know that he has somewhat of a tragic past he has a girlfriend and he's like in college and going kind of places like he, it seems like he's going to be successful but then he comes back a few years later i think and that's all changed and now he's just kind of a loser he doesn't really have anything going for him and yeah and he like I said, is uh, being compared to a goat very often, which I didn't really get in at the beginning, but then at the end, there's an explanation. Um, like, at the end of the text, that kind of explains why that is um, here. And it has to do with his expression uh, about how he, he lacks any uh, seemingly strong desires, uh, carnal or otherwise, I think is what the, uh, description said. And so he's very like passive. And so he's seen as very like, uh, not, uh, powerful, I guess, or not like, uh, meaningful. Although he is actually really interesting. Uh, and then we have a third character whose name is Saki. She's Kuro's ex-girlfriend, the one that he was with at the beginning of the chapter, of uh, the volume, but who is um, no longer with him because of one of the things that happened. And she's very much the cool, collected, very hyper-efficient female kind of character, which is, is something that we see more in the West than in uh, Japanese stuff uh, from my experience. So it's really interesting to see her there. Um, and yeah, it's they're, they're really good and they have very good interactions um mostly kuro and kotoko uh they have kind of this like romance going on at the beginning well she's interested in him but he's not because he's lacking uh essentially he's sad because of his previous girlfriend saki and then they kind of have uh, this first date that they go on and then they kind of get interested in each other and it's uh, interesting. I, maybe some people might um, not like this aspect of the story because she's 17 and he's 22. And in the West, that's not really uh, okay. But it, it doesn't really like come up. They, they just kind of uh, go on a date and then there's a time skip two years ahead. And then she mentions that she's his girlfriend to this other, to Saki. And then she makes an off uh, color comments about. Um, being deflowered and that's basically it that's really the the extent of uh that sort of issue but yeah and yeah they're, they're just interesting they're cool they're nice they're not uh typical shonen protagonists which is a really interesting uh kind of spin to it i mean it's not really that interesting of a spin but it's nice to see that you know the shonen protagonists aren't always uh, you know, a hot-blooded fool and, uh, you know, his, like, secondary um, intelligent characters that help him figure out the problem. And and this might be because this is a, uh, a novel that was adapted into manga, but I'm not really sure if that's uh, really the case. And, yeah, the world building here is really good. It, it technically happens in real-life Japan, but there's yokai, so it's uh, kind of one of those... Uh, 
Harry Potter slash urban fantasy things where it's like there's a hidden world and you just have to know that it exists to be able to see it. Kind of like Spiderwick or maybe um, Narnia or, you know, one of those type of things. Fable Haven, kind of. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of deep uh, magic yokai lore that's interesting that I... Uh, I'm not aware of because I'm not Japanese. I didn't really grow up with that. You know, in the West, we really focus on like Greek and Roman and kind of Egyptian mythology. And so we, we know a lot about that. And we're really interested in the, the type of mythological creatures that come from there. But we don't really know that much about the Eastern type of stuff. And so it's interesting to learn it and to like figure out some of it. So yeah, it's really good. Uh, overall, the, the book is good as it is. I would really like to read the proper novel, but I Google searched it and it doesn't seem to have an English translation. So, you know, maybe um, I, uh, if more people are interested, it might be something that one of the light novel publishers might pick up. I know that they do novels from time to time. So I don't know. And yeah, the art is really good as well. I think it's really nice. I like uh, the way that they're drawn here. Let me show you. Uh, here, that's Saki. She's nice. Uh, well, I guess there is uh, some elements of, uh, you know, fan service, although I didn't really talk about it yet. There you go. You know, he, he's a very much brooding kind of male character, and she's, like, excited about life and stuff. The art is really nice. Um, but, like, I was saying... Um, there is some fan service aspect in it, although not really. They just kind of, uh, the Saki's a policewoman, and so she has a scene where she's uh, changing, and then all the other female police are there as well, changing as well. And they have a conversation in their underwear. I don't really know if that really counts as fan service because there's no really emphasis on the sexual aspect at all. So I don't know. Um... And yeah, oh, there is one thing I want to complain about the art, and it's not really in the artist or the way the art works. It's more of the way that the book was printed that really messes kind of the image up. Let me see if I can find it. It's near the end, and it's basically this double spread that kind of has some loss in it, that uh, the image kind of gets lost in the middle because of uh, the way the book bends. So, which I think is uh, called gutter lost. As you see here, uh, the two images don't really line up correctly and you can't really see what's uh, here. And it kind of messes up the the action um, a little bit. I, I want to see the whole picture and I can't because of the, the way this is printed, which is a, a very minimal complaint since it's the only double spread. Um, and it's not really all that meaningful in uh, the grand scheme of things. But it's sad, because it is the only double spread, that it doesn't uh, function properly because of the way the book is built. But then again, I don't know how you would do it otherwise. I, I don't know how you... Uh, you basically have to break the spine and then uh, be able to open it completely in order to see the whole image. Um, although, maybe not because it feels like it's a little, um, like skewed like one of the pages is a little higher than the other and so it wouldn't line up either way i don't know though but that is a complaint um overall it's a good book i definitely recommend it my rating would be a 4.5 out of 5 or a 9 out of 10 i think it's really good and it kind of reminds me of blue exorcist or like the early um you know first 20 episodes of bleach that's sort of like there's a hidden world that you don't see that you're being brought into because uh, you're needed, essentially, by uh, the other characters or the plotline, whatever it may be. And it has that same kind of feel, but um, it's definitely different from that. And it doesn't fit into the regular established type of shonen that we have, which is really cool. And yeah, that's basically it. Thank you guys very much for watching. Please like and subscribe. I'm trying to hit 50 subscribers this month, 
We're at 42 as of the recording of this video, so I would really appreciate it if you guys can help me reach that goal. Also, check out my other videos. I did an interview with Sentai Books, which is a new light novel publisher, very recently. I'll put it uh, up in the card. And yeah, like I said, thank you guys very much for watching, and see you guys later.